Hi friends, most of you watch my channel without subscribing. Please subscribe if you like my stories. Have a good rest. I'll never forget the first time I saw Clara walk into 10th grade algebra class. She had long golden waves cascading down her back and eyes like emeralds that sparkled when she laughed. I was instantly captivated. We started passing silly notes to make each other laugh. One day, I finally got the courage to ask Clara to hang out after school. We went to the local ice cream parlor and talked for hours. I discovered we had so much in common. Favorite movies, music, dreams of traveling the world one day. Before long, we were officially a couple, holding hands in the hallways between classes and kissing at her locker before the bell rang. On weekends, we would stargaze on the hill overlooking town, cuddled close on a blanket. Do you think we'll be together forever? Clara asked one night as we traced imaginary constellations with our fingers. I hope so, I said. I can't imagine life without you. For our one year anniversary, I gave Clara a silver promise ring. One day, I'll trade this for an engagement ring, I told her. But for now, it's a symbol of our future together. Clara hugged me tight. I love you, she whispered. I knew what we had was special, a once-in-a-lifetime teenage love. Clara and I chose to attend college close to home so we could stay together. While many high school relationships crumbled under the pressure, we only grew closer over four amazing years. We explored the city hand in hand, finding quirky coffee shops, indie bookstores, and hole-in-the-wall restaurants. Rainy weekends were spent cuddled up watching movies and baking cookies. For Clara's birthday junior year, I surprised her with a trip to a cozy cabin in the woods. We spent the weekend playing board games by the fire, taking Penny on long nature walks, and dancing slowly in the moonlight to our favorite songs. On our last night, as we swayed to Lucky by Jason Raz, Clara gazed into my eyes. I'm the luckiest girl in the world to have found you, she said softly. I kissed her tenderly, knowing I was the fortunate one. On graduation day, we both got a little terry-eyed saying goodbye to four wonderful years together. But we were ready for the next chapter side by side. After college, I proposed to Clara on a sunset picnic at the beach, with Penny by my side sporting a little marry my daddy sign on her collar. When Clara saw the ring, she tackled me with a joyful kiss, saying yes, over and over through happy tears. We had a small, intimate seaside wedding surrounded by our closest friends and family. I'll never forget watching Clara walk down the aisle in a stunning lace gown, her golden waves blowing gently in the ocean breeze. She took my breath away. At the reception, Clara and I had our first dance under twinkling lights as husband and wife. How did I get so lucky? Clara whispered as we swayed. I just smiled, knowing I was the lucky one. The first years of our marriage were heavenly. We made Sunday brunch traditions, danced in the kitchen as we cooked dinner, took Penny on long walks to explore our neighborhood. At night, we would talk for hours cuddled up in bed, dreaming about our future. Everything seemed absolutely perfect, until it suddenly wasn't. When Clara started a new high-pressure job, she began working later and later. She would come home exhausted, often on her phone with colleagues. I tried to be supportive, but I missed our leisurely dinners and evenings spent curled up watching movies. It felt like Clara's job was consuming all her time and attention. One night, when Clara texted she had to work late again, I broke down on the couch with Penny. Looks like it's just you and me tonight, girl, I signed Sidley. Penny nuzzled against me comfortingly. I missed Clara terribly. A month later, when Clara said she had to travel for a weekend work conference, my heart sank. We hadn't had a weekend together in ages. D do you really have to go? I pleaded. I feel like I never see you anymore. I'm sorry, it's important, Clara replied vaguely, avoiding my eyes as she packed her bag. I kissed Clara desperately at the door. Hurry home to me, I whispered. I'll miss you, she said with a touch of sadness. Only later did I recognize it as guilt over her betrayal. While Clara was away, I decided to surprise her by visiting the hotel where her conference was. 
But when I asked the front desk for her room number, the clerk gave me a puzzled look. I'm sorry, sir. We don't have anyone here by that name. It felt like I had been punched in the gut. Clara had lied to me. She wasn't at a conference. When Clara returned, she confessed everything through anguished sobs. She had been having an affair with a married co-worker named Demian. I was utterly devastated. My world collapsed in an instant. In the painful months that followed, I vacillated between begging Clara to try to save our marriage and exploding with rage over her continued late nights at the office. I knew my behavior was unhealthy, but couldn't control my jealousy and suspicion. Despite Clara insisting it was over with Damien, I became obsessed with proving she was still cheating. I would show up unannounced, check her phone secretly, follow her after work. One day Clara confronted me. I told you there's no one else. You have to stop stalking me and trust me again, or we'll never recover from this. Seeing the anguish in her eyes, I realized she was right. I had to let go and give Clara the chance to redeem herself, or we would self-destruct. With concerted effort, we slowly rebuilt shattered trust and intimacy. Forgiveness was a winding road, but we were committed to traveling it together. A decade later, our marriage is stronger than it's ever been. We made it through the crucible of infidelity and emerged closer and more appreciative of each other. We spend our weekends going on family hikes with Penny and our two kids. At night, after tucking the little ones, Clara and I will sit out on the porch swing stargazing and dreaming together. We made it through the storm and now bask in the calm. One evening, as we swayed gently on the porch, Clara squeezed my hand. I'll love you forever, she whispered. I kissed her head and pulled her closer. We had weathered the storms of deception. Now our love could flourish freely under an open sky. But our reprieve was only temporary. Clara began working late again, laughing secretively at her phone, disappearing for hours on vague errands. My old doubts flooded back in. One weekend when Clara said she was going away on business, I asked the name of the hotel. Of course, she had never booked a room there. My heart shattered all over again. This time when Clara returned, I erupted in rage. How could you do this to us again? I gave you another chance. I screamed. Clara collapsed in sobs at my feet. I'm so sorry. I never meant to hurt you. Please, let's try to save our marriage. But I was too deeply wounded again to offer another lifeline. It's too late, I said coldly. You broke my heart for good this time. I turned my back on Clara's anguished pleas and initiated divorce proceedings. Losing my soulmate utterly devastated me but my bitterness overpowered any lingering love. I became a shell of myself, cutting off contact with Clara completely and severing ties with most friends. My days blurred into drink-fueled nights of despair and loneliness. Six months later, I got word Clara had died in a late-night car crash, likely rushing to try to see me, distraught over losing our relationship. The news shattered me, my vengeful stubbornness had pushed Clara away forever when maybe our love could have overcome this second betrayal. I would never get the chance to find out or forgive her again. My bitterness destroyed any possibility of reconciliation. Now my sweet Clara is gone. Our happily ever after ended tragically by the inescapable web of deceit that had ensnared us both. The intoxication of obsession and suspicion is fleeting, but the wreckage it leaves behind is lasting. I learned the lesson too late.